Hey, hey, good morning, everybody. How we doing? How we doing? Day two of staying home. Day two of staying home. Keep in mind, just because you're staying home, still got to get your work done. Very first thing, everybody, ladies and gentlemen in fifth grade, if you have any questions, email me. Do you understand me? Email me. I'm available from basically eight in the morning till uh, about three tomorrow. Email me with any questions whatsoever. If you have a problem, you email me. Do you understand? All right. Hey, um, make sure that you study up your notes from yesterday. Uh, we talked about uh, brackish water and how they can take the salt out of the water. And if you remember that, it's called a uh, desalination. And how uh, there are certain parts of the country, certain parts of the world, where desalination is going to have to be a bigger, uh, let's use the word solution to the product of making sure that everyone has fresh water. All right. Um, if you go up and down the coast of uh, California, you will find desalination plants uh, that are currently running. Years ago, the problem with desalination plants is that it took a tremendous amount of energy uh to produce the fresh water but um if you don't have fresh water you don't have uh people living there so the areas decided to uh go ahead and build the desalination plants and uh just live with the pollution from it and also the cost now that was years ago i believe it said 1950 or 1965 1965 since then, obviously, engineers, men and women engineers, men and women engineers, have worked to make this uh, process less polluting and more cost effective. All right, if you look at the city of Las Vegas, and I keep going back to that city of Las Vegas, they are simply going to run out of water very soon. Now, Las Vegas is going to have two problems. A large percentage of their electricity comes from, everybody, let's say it together, Hoover Dam. Um, so they're going to run out of the ability to produce electricity and, and they're also going to run out of, uh, fresh drinking water. All right. Uh, Lake Mead, the reservoir behind, um, uh, uh, the Hoover Dam, uh, that water is being, we're going to use the word, I'm going to use the word bled off. Uh, for irrigation for California, uh, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, and Arizona, Nevada, Utah. I think those are states, but those farms are pulling that water off and uh, it's simply running out of water. And if you go back and look at pictures, I'm scared to do it because I don't want to lose you guys. If you look at Lake Mead, say in the year 2000 to Lake Mead in 2024, you're going to see, they call it the bathtub ring. It's a white line where that was all underwater. Um, and now that water's draining and they have a serious problem. So Las Vegas might be the next city that employs a desalination plant. Now the problem with Las Vegas is it's in the desert. So they would have to pump that water from the California coast Clear to Las Vegas. They'll figure out there'll be a way guaranteed. All right, moving on with today's lesson. And remember, I'm available uh, from 8 in the morning till about 3 o'clock. Today's lesson are glaciers melting. Excuse me, just glaciers are melting, I should say. Go ahead, put that in red. And I'm going to wait for a couple seconds. And then we're going to get started here in one second here. Are you guys ready? Here we go. Okay, the very first thing I want everybody to put down is, come on, go on red. i tell you one thing. Once I get to the store, I'm getting, getting a mouse for this computer. Very first note that I want you to put down. Have you ever heard of Glacier National Park? 
This is a national park located in the great state of Montana. It was once home to about 150 glaciers. Now, if you ever have the opportunity, I know I think uh, Charlie Rucker was out in uh, Glacier, and also I want to say Lydia Sutton in my eighth period was also out in Glacier National Park. Phenomenal. It is absolutely beautiful. There's a little town called Kalispell. You can stay there. You can go up into the national park. Absolutely breathtaking. Moms and dads, grandmas, grandpas. If you want a great vacation, go out there for a week. It is absolutely beautiful. But once home, notice it says was once home to 150 glaciers. All right. So Obviously was, which means there's either more or less. And obviously because the world is warming up, I know you can't prove that with the last couple of days, the warm, the world is warming up. So it's definitely going to be less glaciers than at one time. So let's keep it reading. Next thing I want you to do, put down a glacier is a large mass of snow and ice that moves slowly over land. Hang on one second. Okay, and the next thing I want you to do, next thing I want you to put down, come on, work with me, computer. There we go. A glacier is a large mass of snow and ice that slowly moves over land. Do me a favor, put the word glacier in, in uh, red or blue, another, another color. Now, um, uh, during the Ice Age, these glaciers came from, let's, came from the area of Canada known that we know today and came across the United States. Uh, those glaciers helped form the Great Lakes, um, uh, part of the Great Plains. They helped carve the Rocky Mountains. These glaciers, um, some still remain. Uh, if you go out to Washington and Oregon and Montana and Wyoming, you can see still see some glaciers. The first glacier my family and I were on was actually in Colorado in the Independence Pass. And it was a glacier. I think we were about 14,000 feet up in the sky. So another beautiful place. But make sure that you know that a glacier is a large mass of snow and ice that moves slowly. Okay. It moves slowly. Kind of like me in the morning. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is simple note. People don't realize it. Uh, work with me, computer here. There we go. Okay. Obviously, we know that we can get fresh water from rain, from snow, from hell, from sleet, the four types of precipitation. Where else can we get fresh water for? Everybody give me an answer on three, two, one. Exactly. Lakes, rivers, and streams. Another place you can find a large or a large quantity of fresh water, they're frozen in glaciers. However, now let's think if you get a big block of ice, if you put a hairdryer on it, or you just leave it out in the sun, that big block of ice is going to get smaller, 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 smaller. And that is what's happening. So the next note I want you to put down, the glaciers are an important source of fresh water. Then the next note is, however, due to the alarming uh, rise in the Earth's temperature, glaciers are melting at an alarming rate. Go ahead, put that down. Because of global warming, uh, glaciers themselves are shrinking. Number one, there's less of them, and they get smaller. They get smaller. All right. So next thing that I want you to put down. A 
At Glacier National Park, only 25 active glaciers remain. Put that down. Now, I don't want to mess it up. Hopefully, I don't mess it up here. Here we go. Same situation. This one picture to the right, this one right here, was 1913. This one is 2005. So you can obviously see, excuse me, there are less glaciers now than then. All this water has been released, all right? All this water has been released. Now, if you watch the Weather Channel or you listen to documentaries about global warming, they often say the sea rise is rising. And obviously, if you go to South Carolina and Florida and parts of Virginia, the ocean is rising. We can tell by storms. We can just sit there and measure it. It's not nothing to be debated because we can prove it with simple measuring. One thing that people do not think of or realize is that the oceans are becoming less salty. And no one's really done too many studies of how that affects the rest of the world. And that's what we're getting ready to look at next here. Here we go. Okay, there's uh, one big note here. When glaciers melt, sometimes their water returns to the ocean. Do you think this addition of fresh water would affect the salinity or saltiness of the ocean? Now, let's think about it. If you have this huge glacier, you release it into <clears throat> fresh water, obviously, the ocean is going to have less salt in. It's going to have the same amount of salt, but the salinity is going to go down because there's more fresh water in the ocean itself. Now, we're going to do an activity on school, hopefully on Thursday, where, we're, where I'll show you the difference. But you have to think about it. If this fresh water is going into the ocean, does it affect the ocean? Does it affect ocean life? Does it affect ocean animals? Does it affect you know, fishing doesn't in fact uh, affect uh, people who do uh, crabbing for crabs. Does it affect shrimpers and how they look for, for shrimp? Everything, that's why I love science, because everything affects something else. There's a, there's a glacier in Montana, but how does that glacier melting affect a fisherman in South Carolina? How does that glacier melting affect someone who has a beach house in Key West, Florida. Everything in science is related. There is nothing that is by itself. There's without, you know, there's an old uh, uh, Newton has with every action, there's a reaction. Whatever you do always affects something else. So that's one thing I want you to make sure that you take away from me this year is in science and in a world, Everything that you do affects something else some other way. You might not realize it, but it does. All right. So this is the picture of the glaciers. Here's a great picture um, of the glacier here. You can see what year this is. I can't tell what year this is, but you can see how much more snow there is than now. And that's something that I wanted my kids to see when we went out to Glacier. And I said, hey, before they're gone... I want you to make sure that you see uh, the glaciers here. Let me see if I can get back up here to the top, if it's going to let me exit out. And of course it isn't. So let me see if I can do this. There we go. All right. Here's the very first question I want us to do. Now, this is going to be a homework assignment. So all I want you to do in your notebook or your Chromebook is just write down number one and write down the answer. What 
is one reason why glaciers are important to the ecosystem. What is one reason why glaciers are important to the ecosystem? They provide fresh water. Animals uh, live on them. They're pretty to look out. Sun reflects on them. Why do you think they're important to the ecosystem? All right. So for number one, just write down number one and then write whichever answer you think is best. All right. Number two. What is the difference between the before and after images in the article? All right, this is a simple one. We just talked about it. There are more glaciers. The glaciers are smaller. Animals are sheltering on the glacier. Trees have grown on the glacier. So obviously, there's no way in the world anyone's going to get that one wrong because all you have to do is look up at the picture above. Number three. What might happen to ocean salinity if all the glaciers on Earth melted? Would the amount of salt, the salinity, would it go up? Would it decrease? Would it disappear? Or would it remain the same? So you have an assignment. Answer those three questions. If you get stuck, if you can get stuck and go right to this, and that will give you a hint. Does everybody understand? Remember. I'm available from 8 to 3. Uh, make sure you uh, send me an email if you have any problems. Make sure that you are uh, doing your attendance for class. Um, also, all work is due on Friday um, for not only science, but for English, math, and social studies. Make sure you get all your work done. Make sure you have everything ready to go. Does everybody understand? Hey. Enjoy the day, uh, help around the house, do your chores, get them done. I'm here, as always, go Eagles. I'm going to sign off right now, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. Signing off. Bye-bye.